Now we're going to put together a lot of what we've learned in previous videos. So right now I have my microbit plugged into my computer and it's running this code which we learned in a previous video. So this code is basically getting the temperature and sending it over the serial USB to the computer where we're going to have some code reading it in over Python. And you can see it's sending the temperature and just to double check I can go into my CMD, my command line and I can type in CHGPORT and that is going to tell me what port I'm using. So I'm going to need that port, COM13. And again, if you can't see what port it is, if you go back to the first video, which was the technical setup, there are a couple of tips in there to help you get that up and running. Okay, so the microbit's running. We have its port number. That's good. We also have our database running here in the background. And from our last video, we have our test data still there. We don't need it. So I can just go ahead and delete that test data. So by opening it up, and I can go through each individual thing here if I want and delete them. You can see them deleting one at a time, or I can just delete test data. So that data is no longer there. And in our next program, we're gonna put it into a different um, branch. So just return to our code. This is the same code from the last video. The only difference is I've added a couple of comments just to keep on track of what we're doing. And next up, we're kind of going to repeat some of the code that we did in previous videos about the microbit. So I'm, I'm going to add the code that we have done in a previous video to this code in such a way that we're now going to send the temperature from the microbit through the Python up to Firebase. So again, apologies if you know this code and you've seen it already. I'm just going to go through it again manually and just explain each step as we go. So I'm going to add the other imports we need. So we need a date time. We're going to need the time library and we're going to need our serial library. And we're going to have our connection as we know to our database, but we're also going to have our connection to our serial uh, device, which is going to be our microbit. So the serial setup needs to be done again. Or you can just copy and paste it from the last one and we're going to call it Sear. I'm going to use the serial library dot serial. And don't forget the baud rate or the rate of transmission is going to be 115200 and just make sure it's the same rate set on the microbit. Our port, as we just saw, is going to be COM13. And finally, we're just going to open that port for use. So again, we just do that once, it's not inside the while loop. Um, and we move inside the while loop now. And of course, instead of us asking them what the temperature is manually to enter it, we're gonna be getting that from the microbit. So we're gonna create a variable, microbit data, and we're gonna convert it to a string as it comes in. And we're taking it from the serial connection, one line at a time. And if you remember from the previous video, we have to clean that data. Um, I'm not going to go through the process now. You can look at the earlier video to see the different data that comes in. But I'm just going to use the same code as previous. So we're going to knock off the first two characters off that string. We're going to do some replacements in. So we're going to replace from temperature. We're going to replace blank spaces. With nothing. And again, there is a difference between blank spaces and nothing. And then I'm going to repeat that step a couple of times. So I'm just going to copy and paste that two more times. What else are we going to replace? We're going to replace the backslash, backslash, or backslash, backslash, n. We're going to replace that with nothing. And finally, down here, we're going to replace a single quote with nothing. And the last step, at that stage, it should be just the number. We're going to convert that number into an integer. Okay, so hopefully these steps will read in the data from the serial connection. Stored in microbit data, then we're going to use microbit data, cut off the first two items, save it as temperature, and then replace some unuseful data um, to end up with just the number. Now the next bit is 
totally optional, but what I'm doing is I'm going to create another variable to send up to the database. And that variable is going to be a combination of date and time. So I'm going to create a single integer. Uh, again, this is totally up to you. And really where it's going to come into play is when I read back the data. Because when I'm reading back the data from Firebase in a later video, that is going to read it back as one packet containing all the data. So I can't really, well, we're not going to really look at requesting individual bits of data from the database. We're just going to um, request it all in one go and then we're going to sort it once it's on our computer. But anyway, if you don't want to worry about that just now, you don't have to. Uh, let me just type some of this in. Okay, that should do it. So that variable now is going to contain a single number that's a combination of the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and the second. Um, and I'm going to use it, like I say, later on in a later video to sort my data. So we have created a dictionary already previously in the previous example. I'm going to edit that dictionary now and well, actually, I don't have to add, uh, edit the first one because it is temperature, so it's going to send up the variable we want. But the second one, I'm now going to call it a timestamp because that's really what it is. And instead of John Smith, I'm going to put up the name of my timestamp, which is now. So those are the two bits of data I'm going to send up to the database each time. Again, we're going to need our result post. So again, we're just going to post the same data. We'll not put it up into my test data this time. We'll call it maybe my temperature. And again, that's just a location folder or a branch within the database. Uh, we're going to print the result. And as usual, to make sure that we're getting our unique key. And finally, we're going to time.sleep. We don't want to be bombarding the database with readings every single second or multiple times a second. So that's why we're going to put in the time.sleep5. And once, if it ever breaks out of the while loop, we're going to put in serial.close. Now really it's not going to break out of that while loop, but it's just a matter of putting that in there um, and keeping everything nice and tidy. So it's going to close the serial connection. Okay, so we're ready to run the application. Uh, I just had to change that to a uppercase S from a lowercase S. So I didn't spot that the first time around. So let's run the application and see does our data successfully go up to our Firebase. And again, this isn't going to look for input from me. This is completely automatic. So there we have a return of a unique identifier. So that's a great sign. That means that something has gone up to the database. And five seconds later, there's a new one and so on. That program will keep repeating that. And if I switch to my database, there is my temperature heading or branch. I can open up that branch and I can see the data appearing here every five seconds, a new entry. And if I open up each entry, it's got the temperature and a timestamp. And as you can see, the timestamp is just a huge number that's composed of the year, the month, the date, the day, the hour, minute, second, and so on. So again, that's going to be useful later on, but for now, that is working just as we'd expect it to work. So we've got microbit via serial to Python, and the Python is sending data from the microbit up to our database.